More of us have been having frank and sometimes uncomfortable conversation over the last few weeks about the realities of racism in this country. And for some, these conversations have had consequences. You may have seen the Globe story of a teacher at Pierce Middle School in Milton, Zakia Jarrett, who was put on administrative leave earlier this month after she told her sixth graders in the midst of a lesson about race that, quote, many cops are racist. And a wrongful recording of that made it to the school's principal. Although the suspension was short-lived and Jarrett was reinstated after a few hours, roughly 400 parents signed a letter to school officials saying the suspension, quote, indicates institutional racism is playing itself out in our classrooms. And then this past Friday, Juneteenth, members of the community rallied outside the school in support of her. Zakia Jarrett joins me now. Thank you so much for making yourself available. Thank you for having me. What did it feel like when you got the call the next day saying that you're being put on administrative leave. What did that feel like? It was devastating. But at first, I had no idea why. In the conversation with my principal, he didn't indicate what, what was the reason. He said there was an allegation about a comment I had made. So first, I was just flabbergasted. I couldn't think what it was that I could have said that was you know, would wind me up um, with a suspension, with a paid leave. And I was racking my brain trying to figure it out. And I was, honestly, it just was sort of terrifying. So before you were put on administrative leave, locked out of your email account, locked out of your own lesson plans, were you asked for your side of the story or was it just a done deal? No, I was not. Um, I didn't know anything about the fact that my lesson was recorded until some hours after the initial phone call saying that I was placed on leave. You know, one of the ironies of this, uh, uh, three days before you taught that class, there's a statement put out by the superintendent, Mary Gormley, and I'm just read one line. Our silence on issues of race and equity will be interpreted by those in our care that we accept the current unjust reality and we do not. So you chose no silence. You obviously paid a price for it. The superintendent, I'm told, apologized. I'm told the principal apologized. Did you consider those apologies heartfelt? Did they do it for you or no? You know, as an educator, I see a lot of apologies. Students are often told to apologize to others. And sometimes it's genuine and sometimes it's not. And I um, I think that they are probably sorry, but I'm not sure they're sorry for the things I wish they were sorry for doing. Which is what? So there's an apology for the fact that my feelings were hurt, but I didn't feel like there was an apology for the fact that there was a rush to judgment, that I wasn't given an opportunity to even say what happened or have a discussion about it, that a parent, I, I assume it was a parent, violated a school policy, and rather than saying to that person, you shouldn't be in possession of this video, I was the one who was sanctioned. It just felt like there were a lot of missteps in there where I wasn't given the benefit of the doubt at all. One of the globe, and by the way, I should have said you've taught 18 years. You're not uh, a new kid on the block. I should have said that in the beginning. A seventh grader is quoted in one of the Globe stories saying, it's a Milton uh, seventh grader. It's like an unwritten law at my school that you can't talk about race too much. Are you worried about the impact on the kids, on students, because of what happened to you? Absolutely. Um, because the petition that you mentioned, that letter was sort of was promoted on Facebook. Uh, students know about this. I've received mm -hmm. emails from students supporting me, but I worry that they will fear, that fear, be fearful when they are asked to speak about race or have the opportunity to do so. Do you worry that other teachers will be fearful too, that there's a chilling effect on your colleagues? Oh, it's and, not and a and worry. Frankly, it's I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. It's a certainty. No, the other, my, my coworkers have said that they are afraid of speaking up now. They don't want to end up like I did. Would you be willing to teach the exact same lesson in the exact same way in the exact same school after what happened to you? That's a great question. Um, you know, I thought it was an excellent lesson, and I would. I thought it was a wonderful way to incorporate current events with literature, with poetry, but I don't know. I, I am anxious. I, I'm already under so much more scrutiny now than I would have been before, and 
I am not, I can't say that I would, that I feel comfortable doing that at this time. Amongst the greats that you read from were Langston Hughes, Nikki Giovanni, those people. Let, let, let me just read part of a statement we got today from the head of the Milton School Committee, if I may. As a district, we admit the use of our best practice of placing a staff member on paid administrative leave, even for a few hours during a global a globe pandemic and in the context of a push for racial justice was wrong. We have been and will continue to improve the district's efforts in promoting social justice through the entire system. We hope Ms. Jarrett will join us in our efforts. Are you willing to join them in their efforts? I am willing and interested in pushing uh, the district to become anti-racist, actively anti-racist. So I, I don't know exactly what steps the district is planning to take, but I know that things need to change and I would like to be a part of making that happen. You know, I don't know you before I read about you in the Globe, but if my kids were young and they lived in Milton, I would love you to have been their teacher. Zakia Jarrett, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.